Welcome to the ultimate guide to leg size. This is going to be talking about upper leg measurement. So it's not going into calves or glutes or anything. Yeah. Or anything else, it's just talking about the thigh measurement. So it's going to talk about actual measurements so you can see how you stack up and compare to other natural and non-natural athletes. It's going to talk about different exercises to help build up the quad, the adductors, the hamstrings. It's going to go into a bit of anatomy about the functions of each particular muscle group. And it's going to talk about the benefits and potential drawbacks of having big legs. The main benefit of having big legs is that you have big legs and big legs are kind of cool to look at however there are several drawbacks which i think a lot of people in the fitness industry don't really talk about first story time so for those of you who don't know i used to be an english teacher here in shenzhen and i had been doing the small of squat protocol this is where you squat four times per week super brutal super intense heavy weight just progressively overloading really tough and my legs were blowing up. I was eating a ton of food and I was gaining inches on my legs. My pants were feeling tighter and tighter and these were not skinny jeans, these were just jeans. So I'm going to class and I have a USB with all my lessons on it so I can give the lesson to the little Chinese kiddos. And I, uh, I bend down, I squat down to put the USB into the computer and my crotch explodes, the, the crotch of my pants just just rips in half like just just absolutely massive and I look down I'm sort of behind the desk so no one can see me makes a huge noise but I don't think anyone heard I was pretty stealthy about covering it up I coughed loudly and I look down at the damage and there's just a massive hole in the crotch of my pants at the very beginning of the lesson and so I basically taught the whole lesson with my legs together just you know just you know here's an A here's a B that kind of thing and uh, luckily, I got through the lesson. I uh, usually walk up and down the rows between between the desks and like check kids' homework. And uh, nope, not that day. Nope, just standing behind the desk, uh, <laughs> covering up the blown remnants of my pants. And then I walked home, you know, like a penguin. So there are definitely some drawbacks of having bigger legs. Another drawback is chafing. The adductors tend to want to shake hands. That is no fun. Plus, uh, leg workouts are obviously very difficult and very challenging, which shouldn't really be a reason to shy away from them. But in practice, it kind of is. Your training should be sustainable and semi-enjoyable. And if you just hate leg workouts, there's no harm in doing only one leg workout per week and not focusing on getting huge thighs. Also, in terms of aesthetics, the lower body can definitely outshine the upper body. And if they're not in balance, that definitely doesn't look great. Um, you know, it's really a personal preference, but I would say if lower body is overpowering upper body, not a great look. Arms can't really get too big, let's be honest, but legs, yeah. Next, let's go into a little bit of anatomy. If you don't know the function of a muscle, you can't really train it very effectively. So here is a cross section of the upper leg. You can see in this top left side, this is quad, the various heads of the quadriceps, and the quads make up basically half of the upper leg. They are absolutely massive. Combined, they are the biggest muscle in the human body. Let our powers combine. Earth, fire, wind, water, heart. By your powers combined, I am Captain Quadricep. And then down here in the bottom left, you have the various heads of the hamstrings. And then in the top right, you have the adductors, which are basically probably the most underrated aspect of training the legs. And I would say if you want fast size on your legs, this is probably the most undertrained area where you can get the most inches the most quickly. Now, the responsibilities for each muscle group. The quad is going to be extending the knee, although the rectus femoris also flexes the hip, especially when the legs are straight. So if you're doing hang hanging leg raises or if you are trying to bring the pad up during a leg extension, that is gonna be rectus femoris, which is actually an important muscle group when it comes to aesthetics, um, but mostly knee extension. So a squat, um, to a certain extent, a deadlift, leg press, leg extension, that is gonna be quads. The hamstrings, two basic functions. First is gonna be knee flexion, so a leg curl or any kind of you know hamstring curling movement. 
And then also hip extension. So if you're doing a Romanian deadlift, a back extension, really any kind of deadlift, a good morning, etc., where you are extending the hips, that is going to be a lot of hamstring as well as glutes. Now the adductors are often undertrained. Obviously they adduct the leg. So that machine where you can abduct and adduct, you can tell this apart by adduction is adding to the body. Okay. Also, they, they are very, very involved in a lot of other compound movements. So when it comes to squats, the adductors are definitely trained. When it comes to any kind of like deadlift or RDL, they are definitely trained as well. Lunges, sumo deadlifts, etc. So it's not like the only function of the adductors is to adduct the leg. They're also ex uh, responsible for hip extension in many cases. Now, a quick walkthrough from leg measurements. The average man has 21 inch legs. You measure around the thickest part of the thunder thigh and 21 is perfectly average. So if you're 20 or 19 or 18, that means you have relatively smaller legs, but don't worry because you can absolutely get them bigger with training. Body fat percentage also plays a role. Uh, if you are 25, 30, 35, 40% body fat, you might have relatively large thighs, but it's not really a muscular type of thing. I'd say 22 is above average, 23 is good, 24 is great, and 25 is excellent. Right now, my legs are between those last two. They're between 24 and a half to 25. I think I've measured them at 25.5 before when I was squatting more. Um, but again, there are drawbacks to having bigger legs and 25 is definitely not a bad measurement by any means. And 26 is a huge natural thigh. That is a big, big measurement. Some people try to downplay this amount, but it, that is an absolutely huge accomplishment for any natural lean bodybuilder. Natural hypertrophy has 26 inch legs, at least last time he measured them on his channel. Steve Reeves also had 26 inch legs. And a lot of people consider him to have the most aesthetic physique of all time. So certainly there's nothing wrong with having 25 to 26 inch legs. 27 inches is incredible for a natural. That is absolutely top tier. That is a massive leg. With drugs, you know, it's like kind of impressive, but naturally that is a huge freaking leg. Reg Park had 27 inch legs. Uh, some of the old school, old time bodybuilders had 27 inch legs, but it certainly is not common at all. Arnold had 28 and a half inch legs at his peak. So he certainly didn't have massive legs. Obviously they are, you know, much bigger than what a typical natural will have. But again, genetics, training, steroids combined to give him a 28 and a half inch leg. And still you get bodybuilders today, like Phil Heath, who say that Arnold had no legs, which is kind of true compared to today. And Arnold was actually pretty interesting because he started at 21 inch legs. So he started with perfectly average legs. After a year, he went up to 23 inches. After three years total of training, he went up to 24 and a half. And then after uh, he hopped on the Sazul, he went up to 26 and a half or so inches. And so, you know, he didn't have impressive legs. And yet his overall physique is often talked about as being one of the best, if not the best of all time. So I would say you don't need truly massive thighs to have a very impressive physique. Thigh measurements have absolutely exploded in the, you know, IGF-1 growth hormone insulin era. Ronnie Coleman yeah. had 36 inch legs. Oh, yeah. So I would say that's the biggest difference between the old school bodybuilders who didn't really emphasize the legs or, or perhaps train them with that much intensity and modern bodybuilders. It is the leg measurements as well as the midsection. All right, now let's get into the exercises for quads in a word squats. If you are trying to get big legs and only doing leg extensions, that's not going to turn out very well. I think they are an okay supplement towards compound movements, but they are not the path towards bigger legs. Leg press, also okay, completely fine. But if you can squat, you should squat. I think it's important and useful to realize that how you squat and your positioning makes a big difference in how much quad activation and stimulation and growth you are going to get. If you stay very upright, 
you push the knees forward, which is fine for most people, you are going to get a lot more quad activation than if you are more inclined in the torso, the hips go back, and you are shifting to more of like a low bar power lifting type of style. It's not that the quads don't activate when you're doing a low bar, hips back, sort of wider stance type of squat. It's just that you get less of that and it shifts the tension to the posterior chain to the hamstrings to the glutes and to a lesser extent the adductors and then also the spinal erectors in some cases so i would say if you want bigger legs do a narrower stance more full range of motion where you're not just barely at parallel you're going all the way down or at least below parallel or around parallel and you're going to want to stay upright and again push the knees forward and focus on the quads, putting the tension on the quads, not the posterior chain. Front squats are another good option that forces you to maintain a very upright posture because if you don't, the bar just falls on the ground. Okay, so this teaches you to maintain a very upright posture. Same thing with goblet squats, especially for beginners. This teaches you to maintain a very sort of erect, upright posture to keep your thoracic spine extended and to focus on pushing through the legs and using the quad when you squat. And while generally speaking, you shouldn't try to flex your quads at the top of the squat, there's no tension on there anyway, and it's a good way to hyperextend your legs, you should be under control, you should be balanced in how you are squatting, and you should be focusing on what you are doing. Not just slamming out of the bottom position, uh, but really focusing on perhaps having a slight pause, a, a slow eccentric, or at least a you know, not dive bombed eccentric and really just focusing on what you're doing in terms of rep range. Don't expect to get huge off of sets of one to two to three. I know, you know, there are better analyses and studies saying that you can get big from any rep range and it's true. However, in terms of what beats you up and what is the most sustainable, slightly higher reps is definitely going to be a better call. If you think you're going to get big on, on singles in the squat, uh, I have bad news for you, basically. So if you want to maximize your fatigue to stimulus ratio, this would be a good way to do it. Just do singles, close to failure, RPE, shit myself, and see if you get big legs. Probably not going to happen. I would say 8 to 12 is a good point for the squat. And if I had to go a little bit above or a little bit below, I would say a little bit above is going to be slightly more productive. If you can't squat or don't want to squat, completely fine. Leg press is going to be another good option. I would put your feet a little bit lower on the pad. If you put them super high, it's going to be a lot of hip extension, a lot of you know, hamstrings, glutes, etc. Putting them a little bit lower is going to be significantly more quad. Also, typically speaking, although it's personal preference, a little bit narrower is going to be a little bit more quad compared to super wide. Lunges, split squats, also excellent quad exercises. But again, how you do it is important. Taking a shorter stance, a shorter stride is going to be more quads. If you're taking super long strides, it's going to hit mostly glutes and hamstrings. And yes, it's still working quads, but not nearly as much as a shorter stride will. You can also get some quad activation and stimulation from deadlifting but it is a lot less than squats due to less range of motion and also due to the fact that your knees cannot go forward in a deadlift because the bar gets in the way. With a sumo deadlift, you'll get more quad activation compared to a conventional. And in fact, I would say in general, conventional deadlifting is not a great lower body movement for a lot of people. You do see some people with unimpressive leg development who can deadlift a lot of weight because for a lot of people it tends to turn into more of a spinal erector exercise and for some people they just never get sore in the lower body from conventional deadlifting so i would say for a lot of people it's not really going to be a very efficient way to get a bigger lower body and thus for the hamstrings i would say romanian deadlifts stiff-legged deadlifts back extensions good mornings are going to be your go-to's for that hip extension. Conventional deadlift, it's okay, it's not bad, um, but it's not going to be the most efficient way to target that area. I would say Romanian deadlifts in particular are going to be excellent. Uh, it's not as much systemic stress, and you're really focusing on not isolating the hamstring because a lot of other shit is still working, but on emphasizing the hamstrings.
However, it's also worth noting that curling movements are very important, knee flexion type of stuff, especially because the short head of the biceps femoris, the hamstring, does not cross the hip. So it is not responsible for hip extension at all. So if you're only doing RDLs, you're just not training this muscle. And so if you want maximum hamstring hypertrophy, as you definitely do because you're watching this video, I would say some type of curling movement is going to be imperative. So this could be a machine. This could be with a dumbbell when you're lying on the bench and your your feet are off the end of the bench and you're, you're curling that way, which are sort of a pain in the ass to set up, to be honest, but are very, very effective. Uh, could be a standing machine, could be a prone machine, could be a seated machine. Those are all good, all completely gravy. Uh, and then also something like a Nordic hamstring curl, a, a GHR, those are all going to be good hamstring curling types of movements. And I would say these are definitely worth doing in addition to the extension, the hip extension types of movements. Next up, we have the adductors. Now, the adductors can be trained through adduction, obviously, using that machine where you can open and close your legs. But I would say that's not 100% necessary for a lot of people. And especially if you already have decently developed adductors, you might not want them getting bigger because, again, they tend to do that. So I would say adduction is not always needed, although it can be good for injury prevention, for groin tears, etc., the adductors are very much involved in the compound movements that I've already mentioned. So lunges, split squats, squatting in general, RDLs, these are all going to be very, very good adductor exercises. They are involved in these compound movements because they are actually the main hip extensor in the bottom position of the squat. So if you're doing parallel squats, you are training your adductors. And as I mentioned before, the adductors are very much an underrated area in order to get quick leg growth. They respond very, very quickly for a lot of people. And if you look at Tom Platts, I don't know how he can even walk properly at this point, but you can see his adductors are so fucking big, he can't even stand normally. You know, one is like in front of the other. There's no thigh gap here, okay? You know, that's not the slim down look he's going for. Um, but the adductors definitely add... Um, size to the leg and they definitely reduce the chicken leg appearance for sure. I've seen people with decently developed quads, decent hamstrings, and they still don't look like they have complete leg development because they have lagging adductors. So I think in some cases, specific work can be very helpful. And basically just stick to the basics, just progressively overload basic movements eat enough food, get enough sleep, hit them with enough volume and frequency and intensity, etc., and you should see very, very impressive results. Don't be fooled by the latest gimmick in terms of leg size or leg strength or anything like that. Just put in the hard work. Leg training sucks, and if it doesn't suck, you're probably doing it wrong. All right, that's all for this video. Make sure to like the video, subscribe to the channel if you are not already, Turn on those notifications so that you see what you want to see, not what the YouTube algorithm lets you see. And I will see you, maybe, in the next video. Peace.